Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, the football season is just about reaching its peak in most of the nation's high schools. But somehow the fever seems to have bypassed Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School. Yes, I'm afraid I've always been one of football's more passive fanatics. But as faculty advisor to the cheerleading squad, an honor foisted upon me some months ago... I was invited to a special meeting held in our principal's office during lunch period last Thursday. In addition to Mr. Conklin, those present included his daughter Harriet, Mr. Philip Boynton, our bashful biology teacher, Walter Denton, the manager of the team, and Stretch Snodgrass, star quarterback and captain. Stretch has always been something of a paradox to me. I've never been able to understand how a brain which can retain so many clever football plays can have such difficulty in spelling a word like cat. (laughs) Be that as it may, Mr. Conklin wasted no time in telling us why we had been summoned. As you all know, tomorrow is the day we play City High. You also know that I consider Jason Brill, the principal of that institution, my arch rival. What you do not know is that Brill has obtained a small bear cub in honor of the Clay City Cubs, which he intends to trot out between halves. We, too, must be prepared to entertain the spectators with our mascot. It's as simple as that. Not quite, Mr. Conklin. Our football team has always been known as the Madison Comets. It might be rather difficult to lead a comet out between halves. (laughs) (laughs) Ah! Alex, that's a hot one! Imagine trying to lead a comet! Uh, Let's try... uh... Let's try to be constructive, shall we? (laughs) I intend to change the name of the football team to fit the mascot we select. I'm open to your suggestions. Before we make any suggestions, Daddy, where did Mr. Brill get the bear cub you mentioned? Uh, From the circus, Harriet. You know the one in Moore's Meadow which bogged down on its way to winter quarters? Then maybe we could get something from them. Maybe even a tiger. Boy, the Madison Tigers. I can just picture it. At halftime, we lead this ferocious tiger to the Clay City bench where Mr. Brill is sitting. Can't you just see the expression on Mr. Brill's face? I'm not going to look down a tiger's throat just for that. <laughs> no, I'm afraid a tiger isn't quite original enough, Denton. Oh, let's see. How about the Madison Monsters? Yes, we ought to be able to pick up a cheap monster somewhere. <laughs> With you as the team's manager, Denton, that name is almost ideal. <laughs> I'm glad you've given me an idea. It should be an alliterative name. Now, how about you, Snodgrass? Any ideas on the subject? Yes, sir. What does alit... What does alit... Uh... What does alliterative mean? Don't you know either? <laughs> <laughs> alliterative means when words start with the same initial, like the Clay City Cubs or the Pittsburgh Pirates. How about the Madison Mustangs, Mr. Conklin? We ought to be able to rent one of those for the game. And maybe Mr. Boynton could ride him around the stadium at (laughs) halftime. No, not me. No, no, if you wanted to borrow my pet frog, McDougal, as mascot... (laughs) Not a bad idea. Of course, we'd have to get a rather tiny saddle. (laughs) Now, wait a minute. Stretch, your father runs a pet shop, doesn't he? Yes, he does, Mr. Boynton. We ain't got no animals over there that would be good for what we want them for right now, I don't think. (laughs) Where in the world did you acquire that manner of speech, Snodgrass? I'm in Miss Brooks' English class. Stop boasting, Stretch, or we may both be back in grammar school soon. (laughs) What sort of animals do you have in the shop at the present time? Mostly puppies and birds. Say, I got an idea. My dad got four brand new blue jays this morning. Please, Stretch. Mr. Conklin isn't interested in what your father puts on his corns. (laughs) I don't mean blue jay corn plasters, Miss Brooks. I mean real ones. They're awful pretty and they could... No, if they ever flew away, my dad had lambasted a living. He'd be peeved. (laughs) I know. Maybe I could bring over my turtle as a mascot. 
the Madison Mud Turtles. Now, that's sort of alliterative. Uh, how big a turtle have you got, Stretch? He's exactly three inches square. Now, there's a brilliant suggestion. <laughs> How could the crowd in a football stadium possibly see a three-inch turtle? I know. We could paint Madison in huge red letters on his back. This meeting is getting absolutely nowhere. As usual, the important decisions have to stem from my own creative brain. I will come to a decision by the time school ends and delegate one of you to pick up the animal of my choice. You may all go to lunch now. This, miss! Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Where are you going to have lunch today, Miss Brooks? Marty's Mall Shop? No, Mr. Boynton. I'm going to live dangerously and go to the school cafeteria. It should be much more inspirational. Inspirational? Yes. I had some stew there the other day, which I'm sure would have made a wonderful mascot. <laughs> over, Daddy. Did you think of anything yet? Yes, Harriet, I have. Taking into consideration the fact that the Board of Education makes no financial provision for team mascots, I've decided we must get something which won't cost too much money to feed. What did you hit on? A gopher. A gopher? But, Daddy... If it's good enough for Minnesota, it's good enough for us. <laughs> we'll just capture one this evening in our backyard. Uh, excuse me, Harriet. Principal's office. Osgood Conklin on this end. Hello, Osgood. This is Martha, dear, your wife. I know your title. I conferred it on you. <laughs> now, what is it, my dear? Well, I'm afraid I have some rather distressing news. Your brother is staying over another day? <laughs> no, no, dear. I, I broke one of your favorite bookends. I was cleaning it, and it just slipped out of my hands. I... Don't know how. It uh, there have been greater disasters known to man, Martha. We'll simply replace the book end. But it was a gift, dear. I don't know where they were purchased, and wait a minute. Miss Brooks was admiring them just the other day at tea. She said she saw an identical pair in a curio shop right near her house. Do you think it would be asking too much to have her pick one up for us? It would be a labor of love for the woman. My teachers adore me, you know. <laughs> I know. Which bookend was it, Martha? What design? It was the one with the elephant on it, Osgood. She'll remember it all right. Then the matter is closed. Think no more of it, my dear. I'll see you in just a little while. Oh, by the way, Martha, I'm rather tired, so when I do come home, I'll take a little nap in the living room. Please see that the squealing urchins with which our neighborhood abounds are shooed as far away from our porch as possible. I'll try, Osgood. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Now then, Harriet, fetch Miss Brooks at once, if you please. I can't, Daddy. She's gone home. The speed with which they depart is always a revelation to me. <laughs> well, take this note, child. Attention, Miss Brooks. I want you to purchase at once an elephant bookend of the type you admired so much at our house recently. Now take that right over oh, to Miss... Oh, gosh, Br Daddy, if you're going to send me on any errands, I just can't go. I've got volleyball practice with a team this minute. But I promised your mother I've got well, to get this... Well, let me look out in the hall. Maybe somebody's still around. Stretch! Oh, Stretch! Hi, Harriet. What can I do for you? You can deliver a note, boy. Do you know where Miss Brooks lives? Well, yes, sir, with Mrs. Davis. Right. Now take this note right over to her, will you? Sure, Mr. Conklin. Where does Mrs. Davis live? <laughs> The address is 295 Carroll Avenue. Now, be sure she gets that message immediately. Don't worry about me, Mr. Conklin. When it comes to messages, I'm like the Pony Express. I always get my man. <laughs> See you later, Harriet. Pony boy, pony boy, won't you be my pony boy? Oh, Stretch, would you come here a moment? Oh, hi, Mr. Boynton. What can I do for you? Well, you can let me have a piece of paper, if you will. I'd like to copy down the football schedule that's on the bulletin board here. Well, sure, Mr. Boynton. Here's a piece of this paper I don't need. Nothing wrote on it anyhow. Oh, thanks a lot. I'm glad to be of service. See you at the game tomorrow. Okay, Stretch. Now, I'll just... That's funny. There's nothing written on the front, but what's this on the back? It says, bookend of the type you admired so much at our house recently. Oh, well, it can't be very important if Stretch had it. I don't 
don't like to bother you at home like this, Miss Brooks, but Mr. Conklin said it was important that you get this message right away. Let's see it, Stretch. Oh, I took the liberty of reading it on the way over. Looks like you've been degolated to get our mascot. <laughs> I've been degolated, all right. <laughs> Attention, Miss Brooks. I want you to purchase at once an elephant. Boy. <laughs> what a mascot. Mr. Conklin sure went whole hog. He went whole elephant. <laughs> this must be some kind of joke. I'd better call him up and find out what it's all about. Are you sure you got this note directly from Mr. Conklin? Sure. He handed it to me in his office as I was Hello? walking right... Quiet, Stretch. Hello? Be brief, please. Wasted words are wasted time. Osgood Conklin speaking. Uh, Mr. Conklin, this is Miss Brooks. Naturally. I was trying to take a nap. Uh, this, I might add, is the third time in one week you have jangled me out of my afternoon doze. Now, what is it you want? I just got your note, Mr. Conklin, about this elephant. As I recall, Miss Brooks, the note was quite simply written. I don't expect you to be the greatest English teacher in the world, but I do expect you to be able to read a few simple sentences in the language. But, Mr. Conklin, now, I... Now, please do as I've asked and let me get some sleep. But, Mr. Conklin, what kind do you You've want? I've seen I just... them before, Miss Brooks. Just get one. <laughs> but, Mr. Conklin, the money, how will I pay... Charge it to me. <laughs> now, for heaven's sake, ring off and don't call me back till you've got it. Yes, sir. Stretch, we're going to need some transportation. Is your jalopy out front? Sure, Miss Brooks. Where are we going? We're going down to the Bombay branch of Gimbal's and charge an elephant. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream is directed, using Colgate's exclusively showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst after meals or snacks. Brushing teeth with Colgate's, as directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient, for effective daily dental care. So remember, always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Well, Thursday afternoon, Stretch's jalopy wouldn't start until it was too late to go to the circus grounds. So I made arrangements with Mr. Boynton to pick me up the following morning. Friday, I awoke bright and early and brushed my teeth extra well. I wasn't going to let any elephant's tusks outshine mine. <laughs> then I joined my landlady, Mrs. Davis, in the dinette. Why, Connie, it's only nine o'clock, and this is Armistice Day. There's no school. What are you doing up so early? I'm going on an elephant hunt, Mrs. Davis. Oh, that's nice, dear. Now, how do you want your toast? Buttered or... What did you say? <laughs> I said I'm going on an elephant hunt. In America? Of course. <laughs> I don't want to pry into your personal life, Connie, but why? Because Mr. Conklin wants one. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, if you'll just drink your juice now, I'll go in. Mr. Conklin wants an elephant. <laughs> For a mascot, Mrs. Davis. I guess he's trying to outshine Jason Brill's bear cub. Well, that should do it. If it's any kind of an elephant at all, it should. Where are you going to look for the beast, Connie? Down at Moore's Meadow. Beck Brothers Circus got stuck on their way to winter quarters. Equipment trouble or something. Anyway, they might be willing to rent us one of their performing elephants for the big game. Sounds logical. Who's driving you down, dear? He is. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Boynton. I left the door unlocked for him. Come in, Mr. Boynton. Well, I'll get some dishes and set another place for him. Hi, Miss Brooks. Walter, what are you doing here? Stretch told me all about the mascot last night, Miss Brooks. I think it's just about the most sensational idea ever, even if Mr. Conklin did get it. 
Here we are. Oh, hi, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Mr. Boynton. Uh Uh-huh. Why, it's me, Walter Denton. Oh, of course it is. I wasn't looking. Won't you have a snack with us, dear? Oh, sure I will. Thanks. Well, what do you think of the new setup, Mrs. Davis? The Madison Mammoths. That's what the team will be called, of course. Mammoth? Sure. Because of the elephant mascot. You remember those prehistoric, hairy old elephants, don't you, Miss Brooks? Not personally. (laughs) Oh, that must be Mr. Boynton now. Come in. I'll get another cup and saucer for you. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hi, Walter. Hello, Stress. Hi, pal. Pull up a chair. Here we are. Morning, Mrs. Davis. Hello, Mr. Boynton. (laughs) One more strike and you're out, Mrs. Davis. It's Stretch Snodgrass. Oh, so it is. What can I get for you, dear? Would you like an egg? Well, I'm in training, Mrs. Davis. Oh, oh, I see. I'd like four eggs. (laughs) Oh, and how do you want them, Stretch? With ham and. With ham and what? Bacon. And if I could have some milk, too, please, and bread... What's the sense in renting one? We're raising our own elephant, right? <laughs> I'll get you boys what you want in a jiffy. Coffee's right on the buffet counter. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. Come in. Morning, Miss Brooks. Hello, boys. Oh, hello, Hi, Mr. Mr. Boynton. Boynton. Sit down, Mr. Boynton. Have a cup of coffee while I tell you where I want you to take me this morning. Oh, well, thanks, Miss Brooks. I was rather curious about our destination. Yes? Well, we're going to pick up an elephant together. Oh, then we better not spend too much time sitting around and... <laughs> You say, an elephant? Oh, that's right, Mr. B. Isn't it terrific? She's gonna be our mascot. Can we go with you when you get him, Miss Brooks? Absolutely not, Stretch. The people that run the circus won't do any business with us at all if they think this is nothing but the childish scheme it is. I mean, Mr. Boynton and myself are going alone. Well, now, just a minute, Miss Brooks. Did Mr. Conklin actually say he wanted an elephant to be our mascot? Indubitably. Irrevocably. Yeah. This beats everything. And I've heard of some pretty strange mascots in my time. In fact, when I was coaching at State Normal, we had a guinea pig. The little fella grew grew quite attached to me, too. He used to curl up in my lap all the time. Oh, buddy, look real cute. (laughs) Matter of fact, he did. You know, most animals will lie down in your lap once they grow attached to you. That's fine, Mr. Boynton. With a little luck, maybe our new mascot will grow attached to Mr. Conklin. (laughs) Now, finish your coffee. We're off to the circus grounds. There's nothing quite as deserted as an empty circus lot, is there, Miss Brooks? I've always thought any empty lot was pretty deserted. (laughs) This one is rather grim, though. Nothing left but a few broken-down animal cages and some rusty equipment. Here's the administration car, Miss Brooks. Beck Brothers, private. Well, that must be the office. Well, as they used to say before television, let's go in. (laughs) Come in. Good morning, gentlemen. My name's Boynton, and this is Miss Brooks. How do you do? Beck is the name. Mike Beck. Beck is the name. Dan Beck. (laughs) You must be the Beck Brothers. Give that man a box of bazooka bubble gum. <laughs> uh, we'll come right to the point, gentlemen. You see, we're teachers at Madison High School, and our principal wants us to procure a mascot for our football team. Sounds like a nice idea. Very nice idea. <laughs> <laughs> we furnished a mascot to Mr. Brill of Clay City High just the other day. Nice little bear it was. Very nice little bear. <laughs> Thank you, little Sir Echo, but I... (laughs) Of course, most of our animals, as well as the performers and circus personnel, have already entrained for winter quarters in Florida. But you do have some animals still on the grounds, don't you? Well, what kind did you want? Uh, We want an elephant. An elephant? (laughs) But we, uh, we just have one elephant left. To some people, that seems like a lot. (laughs) Would you be willing to rent it out for a while? Rent it out? Well, frankly, we never thought about doing anything like that. No, we never thought of doing anything like that. <laughs> we'd, uh, we'd take very good care of the animal. Very good care of the animal. <laughs> now I'm doing it. Look, your season is over, and you don't need the elephant to perform today. Oh, Freddie couldn't perform today anyway. Freddie? 
Yes. Yes, that's why we kept him behind with us. He met with a little accident a few weeks ago. Yeah. We might as well tell him the truth, Dan. You see, folks, Freddie backed into the lion's cage and, well, he sort of had his tail bitten off. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Yes, now he can't make a circle with the other elephants. <laughs> But he's perfectly all right in every other way. You make a fine mascot for your team, Miss Brooks, and we wouldn't charge any rental fee at all. Well, the price is certainly right, but why are you doing this? Well, to save money on the elephant's feed bill. He's a good egg eater, Freddie is. <laughs> I'll bet he eats like a horse. Hmm? <laughs> but, Mr. Beck, how do we get Freddie into town? And when do you want him back? Just walk him in behind your car. <laughs> and we'd like him back next April. Next April? Provided, of course, that you promise to take good care of him. You see, we're leaving tonight. Well, we just uh, wanted a mascot for the Clay City game. Wait a minute, Mr. Boynton. Maybe Mr. Conklin would keep him for the rest of the season. Freddie could be mascot for other things besides football. But, Miss Brooks, an elephant. Uh, could I use your phone, please? Certainly, right here. Thanks. We'll leave it up to Mr. Conklin. It was his idea in the first place, and... Hello? And he said... Miss Brooks, I presume. How did you know, Mr. Conklin? I was taking my afternoon nap. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin, but about the elephant... Didn't you get that elephant yet? I'm about to get it right now, sir, but... Well, you'll have to keep this one longer I than... promise you, Miss Brooks, my wife will be very careful of this one. Now, I'd like to get back to sleep, if you don't mind. The kids in this neighborhood have kept me up half the day already. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Conklin, before you hang up, where shall I bring it? Bring it? Bring it to my house, of course. <laughs> now, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Mr. Beck. Yes? Got a hunk of rope? Well... Here's Mr. Conklin's house, Miss Brooks. Good. You better tie Freddy up to the front porch, and I'll go in and tell him we're here. Better take him over the side so he doesn't tie up traffic. All right, Miss Brooks. Come on, Freddy. This way, Freddy. Go on, Freddy. <laughs> on the road to Mandalay, where the flying fishes play, and the dawn comes up like thunder. Uh, let's have the rest of the concert indoors, shall we? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Conklin. Step into the living room, please. Of course. Now then, Miss Brooks, did you bring it? Yes, sir. It's right outside. Outside? <laughs> Why didn't you bring it in? <laughs> Look, Mr. Conklin, I know you've been rather harassed recently, but we've got to get a few things settled immediately. First of all, where are you going to keep it? Right next to those books on the piano. <laughs> huh? But I'm afraid I... Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Mrs. Conklin. I was about to tell you, dear, that I have some disappointing news. There's nothing caught in that snare you set by the porch last night. Oh, oh, hun, I was planning to use that gopher as our mascot this afternoon. Gopher? You want a gopher for a mascot? What did you think I wanted, an elephant? <laughs> Reminds me, Miss Brooks, did you pick up the elephant bookend that we wanted replaced? Elephant bookend? You received my note yesterday, didn't you? Some of it. I mean, apparently there was something not quite clear, Mr. It was Conklin. perfectly I, I... clear, Miss Brooks. You Allow know... me to recall it for you verbatim. It said, quote, attention, comma, Miss Brooks, dash, I want you to purchase at once an elephant bookend of the type you admired so much at our house recently, period, unquote. Well? Oh, brother, exclamation point. <laughs> oh, listen to those kids, Martha. If we don't move out of this neighborhood soon, my blood pressure will now, just... please, dear, calm yourself. The children are just playing. Well, I'm going to the window and stop them. No! I won't have them... I mean, you mustn't go to the window now, Mr. Conklin. Somebody might throw something, a ball or something. But that shouting and racket is. Oh, got... it isn't really so bad. You're just overwrought. Of course, dear. In your nervous state, you exaggerate all irritation. <laughs> 
What was that? What? It's an earthquake! Quick! Quick, let's get out of here! No, Mr. Conklin, you mustn't go outside. I'm not going to be trapped in here like a rat. Come on! An elephant is tied to our house! Miss Brooks! What's the meaning of this? Just relax, Mr. Conklin. Things will be nice and quiet in a few minutes. Freddy is moving us to a dead-end street. Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight... Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Luster Cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mr. Conklin stormed off to the football game after warning us not to bring Freddy near the stadium. This left just a cozy little group consisting of Freddy, myself, and a rather haggard-looking Mr. Boynton. Well, this is terrible, Miss Brooks. With Mr. Conklin refusing to accept any responsibility in this matter, we're we're in something of a predicament. How do you mean, Mr. Boynton? We'll just take Freddy back to the Beck brothers. You forget, Miss Brooks. By now, they're on their way to their winter quarters in Florida. Where in the world is Freddy going to sleep tonight? Maybe we could get him a room at the Y. (laughs) Please, Miss Brooks, be serious. All right. How big is your place? (laughs) This this pachyderm has to be fed and sheltered. Calm down, Mr. Boynton. I think I have the solution. We'll simply return Freddy to his winter quarters. But, Miss Brooks, who can afford a train ticket for a creature this size? Train ticket, nothing. We'll just point him south and give him a shove. An elephant never forgets. Next week, turn into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palm Olive Shaving Cream comes both ways, and whichever way you prefer to shave you'll find that using either palm olive brushless or palm olive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new palm olive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get palm olive brushless or palm olive lather shaving cream today. Did you know that the hotel business, now observing National Hotel Week, is the seventh largest industry in America? What's more, they're constantly working to further add to your convenience and comfort. In short, complete modernization of your home away from home. Remember, the hotels are America's hospitality industry. Be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 